can live with an object for years and years and never really see it. Evil O, Oazwo X Oazwo, coming to you from Udaipur in Rajasthan. And today we're talking with someone, contacted me, showed me her portfolio. I was quite intrigued. And many times when young artists show me their portfolio, it really doesn't catch my eye. But this one did for various reasons. And one of the reasons was the topic, which was kitsch or kit. So anyway, I, without further ado, I would just like to introduce Avni Bansal. How are you? I'm good. Thank you, Vasbu, for letting me speak here. It's a it's a really nice platform, and I I I it's a pleasure for me to be here. Yeah. And where are you speaking from today, Delhi? I am based in Chandigarh right now. I I got married like last year, and I've shifted to Chandigarh. I've shifted my port uh, my my uh, studio upstairs and doing some good work. So Chandigarh is a beautiful city. Yes, yes. It, yeah, yeah. It has an amazing terrain and it can uphold a lot of plants. Like you, mother, the bestest of terrain it has. Like you can grow strawberries to, you know, to, to uh, lychees, to even melons, everything. Like on Last time I saw you, you were working with Lali Kala Academy in Delhi. Yes, I and, was, and you were trying to pacify me <laughs> through the judging of that print exhibition. <laughs> exactly, we, you we, were being I, very good. I did the first uh, print banal basically. I held Lalitkala with the first print banal. I was arranging the whole. Right, right, right. Yeah. Okay, so let's get into the topic. I I liked your PDF. I liked the artworks. I liked the printmaking. You are an artist. Yes. I don't think that many people know of you, but I wanted you to come on this show. Um, I like the topic of kitsch or kitsch. Yes. So you have to explain that I have props. So is this kitsch? Is uh, this kitsch? Yes, yes. If you see it in a very direct way, like in a very um, aesthetically pleasing way, then yes. Why not? If, like, I, if I tape it to a wall, yes. is it kitsch? Yes. So if I'll, I tape it to a wall, it's kitsch. Yes. Okay. I'll tell you one more thing. So uh, right now I'm doing a set of work. I've actually bought a scanner with me. Okay. Like a, like a very good quality scanner. And I'm actually um, scanning all sort of objects that are around me. Okay. okay. All sort of them. And uh, then you know, segregating all the objects in different ways in, in proper frames, you know. For example, um, the the idea of my art is to showcase the Indian ways of living, okay? This is what I'm intrigued with nowadays, okay? So when you, when you go to a market, you see a lot of um, uh, various kind of shops. There's a stationer, there's, there's a there is, uh, and they all have some kind of, uh, small uh, objects, correct? And and they buy it and they enjoy them, correct? And they use them to do their course, correct? So I'm literally picking all those objects from different, different shops and mother basically a curated frame of one shop. Okay. Like, so you're, but you're, you're picking up all the objects in one shop and putting it in a frame. Yes, yes. For example, okay. there is like a hawker, like a chai hawker. So chai was whatever, whatever things he had. I'm just go picking them up and I'm scanning all of them together and making it into a proper frame. Okay. Placing them in Not a frame. the 3D objects, but the, the the print of the objects, the scan of the yes. objects. Yes, the scan. Okay, are. okay. Because that idea of print is also there, right? In my head always, that I am always intrigued with the flat image mode. And, you know, um, the idea is to document all little, little things that exist in our current Indian ways of living and then, you know, place it in a frame to talk about it. But what is kitsch? I mean, that's a word that always perplexes me. 
because, you know, people have referred to Ravi Varma as kitsch, Ravi Varma oleographs, but also he's considered a fine artist by many, many people. Um, it always seems a matter of perspective to me sometimes, and it's sort of what the elite approves of and disapproves of. Um, but you had some very definite definitions of kitsch that you sent me. There is, uh, kitsch is, I think, uh, very, some, something that can be grabbed very easily, which has less thoughtful meaning to it, right? But when you defining what is kitsch, it's again very thoughtful. Yeah. So that, contradict that contradiction is there, that duality is there. So, you know, all the theories in art are, I guess, made up why are our, uh, our observations and how do we define them is very uh, subjective in matter, I guess, you know? So, right. Well, I like the definitions that it was easily accessible, so easily accessible, people didn't have to think about it. Um, I'll tell you it was one more. appreciated the by the masses, appreciated yes. by the masses exactly. rather than the elite. Exactly. So I'll tell you how I see kitsch, okay? Um, people in India are like, they have a lot of art in, in their surroundings. There's no doubt, okay? Either, either we have ornaments like jewelry or we have uh, torrents that are uh, placed in front of the walls or we have a lot of um, uh, clothes for our gods, you know? or we have table runners or, you know, all kind of decorative things. And they, they have come from a very uh, old tradition of India. Like all, all the kings and Maharajas, they used to own all these things and they have become more simpler and they are existing in our country, in our lifestyle, correct? And, and that's, a, that's also a form of art. But even the craft, crafts of India, they're also all form of art and they're far more cheaper and readily available to us. Correct. Well, when I see like a tauren hanging over a door, if it's made in a village, I don't really think of it as kitsch. I think of it as folk art, which we've developed an appreciation for. Okay. But maybe in years past, maybe people would think of it as kitsch. I'm not sure. Um, Since we both are artists and we have seen things in a, uh, in a way, uh, in a very artsy way, we understand that what is folk art, what is craft, what is for contemporary art, correct? But for people who are not aware of all the, you know, segments or the lines, defined lines, for them, it is, th these are very decorative, regular things. Correct? I had one, I had one review years ago. I think it's when I had a show in Mumbai, possibly. And it was of my photographs and it was my Krishna series. And I don't blame the critic because the art writer actually did a pretty good job, but the headline person who wrote the headline, the headline was Kitchen Tell. Okay. Which I will never forgive them for. Because <laughs> I didn't see my work as kitsch at all, but you know, it gave it that skew and it, it has I such negative connotations. That, ha yeah, exactly. And it had that. It has that decorative element also because there's miniature involved in it and there's a lot of small, small decorative elements. Though they, they are meaningful and they define some points in your work, right? But for for the other person, you know, uh, they, they might be more only decorations. So that's why he, he said. You know, I think this would make a fabulous Clubhouse conversation. Maybe next week we should have you on Clubhouse. Okay. Next week, which would be like if we premiere this this coming Sunday, then um, it would be the day after this premieres on Monday. You could you could come on and we could talk about kitsch with a few other people. Yes, it would be interesting. So, so anyway, talk talk about your work. Talk about my work. Okay. Um, I I. I did my dissertation in high and low art in my MSU time, okay? And I was literally trying to uh, divide, uh, like uh, question what is contemporary art and why why craft, craft is considered uh, a ki kind of low art. 
correct and right. i was making a lot of um, and i worked with some uh, soap stone sculptors also for almost two months and i worked like i i made some small um, you know uh, sculptures like maybe seven, uh, like six six inch eight in, in sculptures of uh, yagyas and uh, yakshas and yakshis and basically me portraying yakshas and yakshis or a god or a devi okay so i had all kind of uh, like um, i was standing in a very godly way and yet i had chashma and i had my specs and my hair like that and it was like a amalgamation of me with devi you know right and and at that point of time working with them i felt that you know uh, these the they they are amazing artists like they are skilled they are uh, they are aware of what they are doing they have so much to tell about each and every piece because they they they've been doing it their generations have been doing it from so long they have that history in it and me as an individual i just entered the art college i have no clue you know what my past has been about and how it is and i'm much more less aware than them and still i i consider myself as a contemporary artist and they are being just you know uh they they're not given enough attention to an yeah, extent for they, sure. they, they they sell their work for cheap they, they their craftsmanship is not uh, considered elite you know so so that difference really struck me and even that's one thing i wanted to say about kitch is that kitch is thought of as being easily accessible and also overly sentimental but it has nothing to do with the amount of craftsmanship that is put into it so somebody can put incredible craftsmanship into something and it can still be dismissed as kitsch which is rather sad actually yes um it's an easy way to dismiss art uh -huh. i i'm saying that i eventually with my practice i've realized that one has to have a balance between the craftsmanship of the work and the narration behind it that what actually you want to say and it has to be little relevant to what you are right now and how how the surroundings are correct and it has to be simple it doesn't have to be very complex right correct like as an artist i'm a human being and i'm also growing with time i'm not like a first hand into like jo who knows everything on the first go correct in the initial years of life so i have taken it very slowly i am also developing as an individual my artwork is also developing but i'm not forcing myself to speak out loudly or you know to speak about things that i don't know you're still in the exploratory stage yeah yes totally yeah, and i which is i good. Uh, and i want to be like that at least for next 10 years more I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, i am very happy to be slow but i want to be uh, truthful to my you know practice about what i want to show and how do i want it to come out well i think that's a very smart idea because i think many artists especially when they first come out of art school they plunge too quickly into the art scene try to make their names and they're really not even sure where they want to go yet yes but they're they're I trying to so make their I, name i think experiences come with time they cannot happen just like that they they do come with time and it takes a lot of time to develop things understand it in a more profound and a thoughtful way so yes and so i want to talk about specific works um i've got your pdf in front of me so you did a series called asymmetrical botanicals yes you want to talk about those for a while yes so uh, i did these a4 size drawings when i was in lalit kala academy i used to sit for an hour an extra hour in my uh, office time you know after the office and i used to sketch these almost one every second day okay and i i developed around uh, 10 drawings and they were all inspired by my walks around the academy it has a lot of good lush green area okay and and they were very spontaneous uh, ways of describing how i see these uh, the the greens around me right and if then then once i left the academy i i started drawing these drawings of like on huge huge canvas uh, huge papers basically like maybe 
you know, a 30 inch or to 40 inch papers, like long papers. And uh, then I, I did went to Udaipur. I, I, oh, you did? You came to Udaipur? Oh, wow. Cool. Yes. So, and over there, when I saw the palace, the city palace, and I, I'm aware of the Mughal art and everything. And they have a lot of botanical drawings anyway, uh, in yes. lay, correct? And they are also equally inspired by the, the, uh, but, uh, the, the, the greenery they used to see around, correct? The, the, the motives are around it. So right. the, the idea came about amalgamating both the, uh, both the things together, that how a motive can be derived from those green rush drawings and how I can break the uh, adjacent semblances of, uh, of Mughal, uh, you know, uh, murals. Well, Udaipur is surrounded by gardens and lush countryside still. There's so much nature here. And then plus there is a floral tradition and so many things from fabrics to miniature paintings. So. Yes. So the idea, uh, why asymmetrical, you know? So the idea is to make two adjacent sides different from each other but yet in a similar way like basically to to distort the same image again and again to bring out something else okay, okay. and then uh, obviously there, there was an inspiration from those uh, mughal inlays that i saw okay okay well they're really beautiful i like all of them that you have in your pdf i'll be inserting images and then you did one on the border tradition, which is close yeah. to my heart because I work with the border artist Shankar Kumawat, who does the borders on our paintings, and I just love the borders. Uh, what do they call them in Hashia? I think it's called Hashia in the old Mughal tradition. Yes, I don't know I, if I, I'm pronouncing I, that right. But anyway, tell us okay. about your border traditions. Yes. So since we have been talking about Kitsi art and since, um, again, uh, the idea was that Indians do adore the adore borders, correct? It is there in our textiles, in our artworks, in our homes, on in our architecture, in our temples, you know, everywhere you can see some kind of border, okay, right? And uh, basically to celebrate the tradition of having a border, was the idea okay even my robe is a border yes. <laughs> exactly exactly and the idea was to make people aware of the fact that they are surrounded by borders and they are surrounded by uh, art around them correct and then you know placing it in a more contemporary setting in a more uh, artwork setting i would say you know and uh, I, I did these borders on paper also and on textiles also. Like on, and are on they are they screen prints? They're screen prints. Yes, they, they are screen, screen prints. prints. I have few uh, borders done using woodcuts. Like I've made around six six uh, uh, meter long woodcuts of these borders, and then these are uh, and some some borders are done using screen print also. And they're meant to be hung from the ceiling or laid across. Yes. Low pedestals. So I'll, I'll tell you. I, uh, I also am trying to figure. So you know, printmaking has that advantage of repetition. Yes. Being a printmaker, I have that advantage of repetition. Mother, the idea is like being a printmaker. I have that advantage of, of doing repeats of one uh, design or one motif. Correct. And um, I try to see a lot of repetition around me also, like all kind of patterns and repetition around me. For example, plants. Plants also grow uh, by uh, repeating their leaf structures again and again, right? And uh, even in the border traditions, the idea was to repeat one set of motive again and again to make a six feet, no, six meter scroll, correct? And yeah. the idea was to present all the editions together in a scroll. And while I was exhibiting it at Pulse Society, I kept it open for the uh, viewer or the you know buyer to cut it, basically per edition. They can just cut the edition and really, it. you encourage people to just pick up a scissors and cut it if they cut want the it. Yes, yes. Oh, that's because very uh, generous of you. Yes, 
because i'll tell you a reason behind it because i wanted them to understand that borders are something that they know exist in their houses every time correct all around them and i wanted them to understand that uh, as an artist i'm not doing something that is out of my world or out of anybody else you know mindset it is it is not complex it is simple right it is right. I, i'm just picking it up and placing it in a way that it intrigues your thought processes as an individual Well, it's a very I, populist act to just at, at invite people to cut a piece of work and take it home with them. Yes. Oh. So, so that that was the idea, and I and I think people really responded well. Whoever came, they were very you know excited about the idea. But though nobody cut it on the spot, but yeah, I was very willing that that I I will sell uh, per edition, you know, as at a price, and they can directly cut it and use it as however they want it. Like they they can frame it or they can use it in a prop or in a product or you know keep it with themselves. However, like however, That's it looks nice. from your PDF like you also did some thinner borders that you hung from nails on the wall. Yeah, yeah, that that I did in the studio in Janigarh itself. from that it started basically i okay. i yeah so that was Those, the first border and then you move later to the longer borders i had actually what happened was um, i had a lot of ideas around creating a lot of products like limited edition uh, uh, print making products you know just to just to um, spread the idea of print making because half of the people when i talk to them about print making they don't know about it correct so to just you know just 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 make them understand that you know you can create things around it how it is done why it is done so i i was in the process of creating a lot of products but eventually i kind of stopped it he let 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 it be more artsy well this this project with borders it sort of helps people realize the art in their own lives yes Yes. you know how they're actually surrounded by art in their own homes and they may not even realize it but yes. there is art there even exactly. if it's just a, a print on their plastic dishes it's still some sort of art yeah might be kitschy <laughs> might be mickey mouse for all we know the grid tell me about the grid oh the grid was an initiative to engage people basically people are most of the people have never done screen printing by their own selves correct right so so i really wanted uh, people to think about have that nostalgic you know memory of uh, making grid art you know as kids we always used to fill small small blocks and fill and create like some kind of forms you know yeah so i wanted that memory to come back and i wanted people to experience the idea of making uh, uh, screens on wall like doing screen on the spot like like a more engagement activity that they should go through that what artists go through while creating an artwork so you're very very much about involving the viewer yes yes you want that, to turn the viewer into an artist me, i guess yeah uh, i get the feel of being an artist yes yes it's i i think it is very important for every mother one should feel it that how artists think and why artists think like that and and it's it's not something that we make up it's it it comes very naturally to us you know uh, the the vision i have around me the see, the way i see around me it 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 is not something that i prompt to i i it just comes to me naturally i choose to be an artist because i am like that it's not something that out of fame or you know uh, i just do it for out of curiosity to make myself understand that what i like and what i don't i i noticed in your definition of kitsch you gave sort of a different indian definition of kitsch kitsch yes. with two e's in which you you referred to it as the scraps that a butcher throws away sort of the worthless cuts that are thrown away is kitsch but yeah. it's the same in german you know it's sort of german it means like garbage basically exactly so 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 are you in these projects are you trying to make people realize that these things they don't take seriously and kind of throw away that there's actually some value in them is that like un yeah, underlying I, the idea is to make people aware of this surroundings people just ignore i feel like most of the time like they just so busy in you know building things 
love that literally don't understand small small gestures of people or small gestures that thi- or things that still in that moment that you know it's okay it's okay to be like shan to be ha- happy basically <laughs> and just enjoy right. what you are enjoy the little things yes yeah you know? that's the idea <laughs> I catch myself that all the time and you know what happens to all of us I think you can live with an object for years and years and never really see it Correct. and one day you pick it up or you look at anything oh I never noticed it had that I yeah. never saw that that design is this I thought it was just design but now that I look close I realize it's little rabbits or something you know I think that happens to all of us because we dismiss that kind of I want to say the manufactured craft Correct. you know we don't really see it yeah there's a lot of labor in each and every object that we use nowadays like a lot of labor and one has to like respect that idea like you just can't ignore the whole thing yeah i mean it brings up so many issues this whole division between fine art and craft and yes. kitsch the garbage that is thrown off the butcher's table um you know how do you make those decisions yeah because yeah. once again like i said earlier the kitsch if you think of it as sentimental and easily appealing to a person visually doesn't necessarily mean that there's no work involved no yes. and we don't appreciate the people who do those work that work yeah so you you have another uh uh piece the garland you want to yeah. talk about that i uh, the way garlands are presented in indian uh, lifestyles we use garland as a motive to show gratitude towards people and also to serve egos of our individual so that our work is being done correct and it's a it's a habit or it's a behavior that indians have been used to correct and uh, and we we just live with it we don't think around it so uh making a garland was basically to make a, a individual think around the idea that why that that uh, to think about the duality the plus and the negative of the uh, object and our behavior also like right. correct and again uh, the idea of doing a garland was also to show uh, uh, to show the repetition of flowers basically uh print making as a medium also has the advantage of repetition again right and and in garlin we use uh, uh roses or one type of flower again and again to create a beautiful ornament correct so that amalgamation is there that i use print making as a medium i i i did cut a uh a, a, a petal and created a rose out of it or a flower out of it and placed it in the garlin so that i, I i'm just trying to find a lot of repetition also around me also the latched jewels yes the exactly. latched jewels it's I, somewhat uh, similar but different and and i really love the one that you use as your profile picture by the way yeah. behind your ear it's really nice yeah so again uh, the i again the idea was to make indians aware that they do have art in them basically we buy ornaments like you indians buy a lot of jewelry they they are the one who invest in gold maximum like in maximum right. amount correct and they they can buy like ample beautiful jewelry because they consider it an investment they consider it beautiful but again they don't buy art per se from contemporary artists or from galleries correct Thank you. I know what I'm going to hear though. I'm going to hear people say um yeah, but you know borders and jewels and garlands aren't really kitsch their design and they're going to draw a distinction between those and say that they're not really kitsch because when you think of kitsch you think of attempts at fine art that fail. I would say Okay. But now you're moving into the fine art realm obviously you know you're making that leap so let's go into ecstasy lands and tell me how that um I mean cuz that's when you get to ecstasy lands it seems like you're really trying to move into fine art 
you know, even more so than the others. Am I right or wrong? Not really, but yes, to 10 percent, I would say yes. But they also came very naturally to me. I'll tell you how. So in 2017, I did this whole series of bursting motive series. Okay. And there are a piece of 35 prints, like really small 35 prints. And the idea was to basically distort the form of circle again and again to create various motives. And they were very spontaneous. They do not mean anything individually, but as a collective, they do make sense, you know. And somehow I really connect to the motive, se motives, the Western motive se uh, series. And now, in my practice right up right now they are being used as building blocks to create new artworks ah okay so they're amalgamations of things yes so i have been scanning all those prints woodcut prints and you know digitally collaging them to create various artworks or even i'm creating right now i'm like creating five feet large uh, woodcut uh, collages on paper also I'm, I'm repeating and cutting all those motives again and again to create other forms and symbols. Well, I really like them. They're beautiful. And I love the combination of the black and red palette. That's so nice. Yes. And that gray background is just gorgeous. And again, and then, I tell you, there is, I saw, it, it came very naturally because again, I ha these are all done in Chandigarh itself. And Chandigarh has a, uh, it has a beautiful green terrain, like amazingly green terrain. And such, such plants you don't see anywhere. Being a Deliite, I could not. Like, Delhi doesn't come with such beautiful plants, okay? And uh, this, the, the idea of uh, seeing such beautiful plants in Chandigarh made me do it, you know? Made me think yeah. around. So, it's not something that has abruptly come but it has come very naturally as an observation again <laughs> so let's go on is there any other series you'd like to talk about i'm just going through your pdf which i know is rather lazy of me the great okay. india chula the great Indian reading? chula yeah 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 yes uh, what is the I'll... great indian chula yes i'll tell you uh the idea was so as an Indian, again, um, we, we do enjoy our time in kitchens. There's a whole bunch of activity that happens in kitchens of India, okay? Yeah, yeah. Like all families come together in kitchen. Rest of the day, they do not meet or they might not, you know, even uh, come together or talk or have a laugh. But in kitchen, mm, they... Believe they, it or not, it's the same in the West. In America, okay. in Italy... The kitchen is the place where the family comes together. together. Nobody yeah. uses the living room unless there's like guests who come over. A little more formal. And and we do have a history of making food, enjoying food, and you know, having having a good good talk, get together around food. So the idea was to how how do I symbolically represent the 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 stories of a kitchen, correct? So so, uh, so the the first thing that came in my head was chula, right? Like everything happens on kitchen, correct? All our experiments and creation happens on the kitchen stove. So idea was to basically uh, click photos of the kitchen stove in in its most used way of the day. You know, every day for at least seven days, or maybe I'm, I'm thinking of doing it in a more, uh, for a month, maybe 30 prints, you know. And, and then you're showing all the little grease spots and the crumbs that have fallen down and, and everything. And again, this idea of kitsi, you know, that keech, that rubbishness, that one, one should, you know, yeah. enjoy those spots also. One doesn't have to be always perfect. As an artist, I'm, I can't be perfect, right? So the but idea, it's strange because it's to, for me, it hovers between kitschy, but it's also sort of highly conceptual also, <laughs> you know? Yeah, so that, that's the, uh, I think my work is actually going in various directions. I'm not saying, I'm not denying that it is not only about kids. It's also about a lot of other segments of what I see, you know? And uh, I'm also trying to figure out the best way in which I can actually speak about it or represent them in a more, you know, direct and a more simple and uh, simple way. Now I come to on your PDF the 
phallic series. <laughs> Can we talk about the phallic series? Tell me about that. Okay. I, I shouldn't make jokes about that because phalluses are part of religious art in India. I'm aware of that. And, you know, I'm much aware of that. Yes. So the idea was, um, I, I, you know, when did I start these series? Um, when I was actually working with Lalitha Academy. And uh, in my free time, I used to get like small, you know, sheets with me and I used to draw and carve over there, okay, a lot. And during my um, uh, academy time, I did felt some, um, you know, manly ego around me. Yeah. I'm being very genuine, okay? I, I did felt that manly ego around me and I I was in I, I was not married I was actually dating a lot of people around and I was going on out of dates just to experiment and you know figure out right partners right ways of doing things and you know that that age was there like three yes. years back three yes. years back I would say so you know the amalgamation of all those experiences you know came as these phallic form motives. <laughs> okay. They're beautiful though. They're, they're really exquisite. I think, you know, it's, um, if you just saw one other than the first one, you wouldn't necessarily equate it with a phallus. You could very easily equate it with a sword or something yes. like that as well. So um, I tell you, there is um, one very big, advantage in my work I feel so is that I keep it open-ended for people to see, see it in their own with their own interpretations and vocabularies you know right. my idea is to bring something new a new form of a uh, form object or a visual resonating with my own thought processes but I keep it very open for the viewer to you know interpret it in their own ways you know and uh, there is a series called object series in, in, later on you know i did well, I'm that down in to my the burning time. motif series so i don't know if that's the same thing no no it's it's below that it's, it's like below that is the object the series that are on my back the prints that okay. are on my back okay know? yeah 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 the the yeah. black and white lino cuts yes okay these are wood cuts, wood cuts. okay so uh, I'll tell you what um, what I did was I did almost all print in two days and I did a series of six prints, okay? And they were very spontaneous prints and I just carved it in a day and took a print next day, like an edition of five or four in next day, okay? And they were very spontaneous and they were uh, again an amalgamation of all kind of memories I have as a child of objects or of experiences. And, you know, and... I, I did wrote those semiotics, like small, small words around each and every uh, uh, the image, you know, that how, what, what I feel that what do they represent? Okay. Is this what, is this what you call the memory cuts in your PDF? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. The memory yes. cuts. Yeah, those are astoundingly beautiful. I really yes. love those. So, you know, this, this little series of six, it reminds me of the type of elegance that Serena Hashmi, you know, maintains in her work, maintained in her work. I, I know I they're not minimalist more, like Zarina Hashmi, but they're they're like really have that elegance to them. So I did pay you a compliment. Thank you. So, you know, I, I wrote small, small words around those six woodcuts that represented the image that said that this is what I see in them. Okay. And when, um, when a person directly comes to the visual, they, they don't understand it, that what it is as a, as an individual who is not aware of art. But when they used to read all those lines, no, they used to feel, okay, huh, yes, it does look like that. Yes, it does look like that. And they start thinking around the idea that what, how, how do they connect to it, you know? So, so, so those, those little words also kind of help them to navigate through the work. Which, which I th felt that is very important for as an artist to show, you know, tell them that how the in what direction you need to see the artwork. Correct. Yeah, it's all just so gorgeous. You've really done some beautiful work here. Um, 
There was one thing I missed somewhere here. Is there anything in particular that you want to discuss? Mm, not really. Oh, I know. Wait, wait, wait. I found it. I'm sorry. Um, the blooms. The blooms. The yes, this is an ongoing series. I am uh, doing a set of like uh, ten uh, huge uh, woodcut collages. I told you about recently. And again, I'm just reprinting a lot of old uh, mattress, you know, of woodcuts and dinukuts I've been doing from past six, seven years. And I'm just reprinting them and again, creating, you know, larger size of artworks, like more flat artworks, I would say. And, and, and the blooms are again, like a uh, inspiration from the green rushes that I'm seeing around, but, and other, other, ideas also I'm just in the process of creation creating these books so let's see let's see how it so it's a woodcut out. collage and gouache yeah yes the, the yes woodcut that, collage and gouache yeah yeah that that's the bloom correct yeah 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 that's really so, beautiful and then what about the carousel the carousel again was inspired by the memory of you know seeing small babies and kids around me like i had two three kids that just came up in last two years you know and i used to give them a lot of carousels or you know those playing toys so yeah, that yeah, memory yeah. came in and uh, yeah that that was the idea of creating those small small uh, you know carousel kind of drawings again and again so yeah it's I, a little bit I think you have a fabulous body of work and it's really growing and it's uh, I'm very, very happy to get you on Evil O and interview you. You've frozen again. You. There you are. Now you're back. Okay. I apologize that I might, this video might be quite chopped up because I'll do have to do a lot of editing on it because of connection problems. But Avni, it was very nice talking to you and learning about your practice. And I'm very serious. I think we should put you on the Evil O Art Clubhouse and let's do a whole clubhouse chat on Kitsch. Yeah. And I'll invite some other people who've kind of dabbled with Kitsch also and see if we can get a good conversation going about what is Kitsch and how different people explored it. Yeah, um, that, that would be nice and wonderful. I, yeah, yeah. I think it would be fun. I mean, I'm interested in this because I've explored it a little too. I don't think I explored it in my miniatures really, but in some of my in my photographs of Krishna, in my mind, I was really thinking of the Ravi Varma posters and things when I was doing that. You know, it was sort of like an update in my mind. And so, you know, there's there's a certain attraction to kitsch that I think makes an artist want to play with it and see what they can do with it, you yeah. know? And I think that's exactly what you're doing. And it's an interesting direction to go because most people avoid it like the plague. They don't want to touch it, you know, but you're, you're charging fully into it and seeing what you can bring forth. So. I think I'm going with the flow and I, I do believe in what I think and that's what I do. I, I really don't care about any other <laughs> well, that's the way you have to be. That's the way you succeed. Don't don't let other people push you. You decide your own path. You know. And it takes time. I realize it. It doesn't happen that that quickly. It takes. Time. I think you're doing the right thing. Anyway, I have to end this. Thank you, Evil O. Thank you so much for joining Evil O. Please remember to like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. You have to do that. Helps the channel. Please Watch us on Clubhouse. Sure. Hopefully, hopefully we'll get Avni on a Clubhouse chat very soon. Maybe even the day after this premieres on the Evil O channel. And we'll talk about Kitsch further on Clubhouse, okay? So Avni, you have to wave goodbye. Bye-bye. Hope you all like it. Thank you. Thank you so much.